In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. When our Lord tells us to uh, make purses for ourselves that do not wear out, uh, to store up treasure in heaven where no thief comes near and no moth destroys, well, the only way we can act on that is by faith. If we, if we didn't have faith, if we didn't believe, then there's no way that we could give everything away, that we could sell all of our possessions and give alms, because what would be the point? Indeed, that is what uh, the world, society, teaches us, that we need to look out for ourselves first and foremost, that success in this life is determined not by how generous you are, how much love you have shown others, but by how much stuff you have, how much wealth you have accumulated for yourself. Because without faith, there is nothing more than this world. On a faithless worldview, when we die, that's it. So we have to make the most of this life. We have to be selfish because that's the only way to have success. That is what a faithless worldview teaches us. But if we have faith, we live our lives with the confidence and knowing that beyond this world there is a life to come and that in that life, in that life, our fancy possessions do not matter. Those things will wear out. They will be forgotten about. They'll be left behind. To live as if they wouldn't would just be foolish. With faith, we can be courageous then. We can let go of the things that are not really worthy of our trust. Because that's what faith really is at the heart. That which we can put our ultimate trust in. Now ask yourself, ask yourself, would I put my ultimate trust in my uh, new sports car? Would I put my ultimate trust in my house and uh, my bank account, my 401k? Would I put my ultimate trust in my social security? Definitely not. Uh, do I put my ultimate trust in someone else? Do I put my ultimate trust in someone else's fortunes? Hmm. Out of all the things I could put my ultimate trust in, um, what is that one thing that won't wear out? What is the one thing that will last forever? Well, it's God, the creator and redeemer of the world, the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. He is the one our ultimate trust should be grounded in, the one in whom we have faith in. And by the way, uh, faith in the scriptural context, the scriptural definition of that word, is not about gambling or betting. It's not some, some sort of intellectual cop-out either, or laziness. It's not us uh, clinging to something that's probably not true. It's not as if faith is about looking at all the uh, evidence before us and all of our life experiences and saying, well, the odds are it's false, but I'm just gonna um, put my faith and hope in that it's true. That is not what we mean by a biblical sense of the word faith. Faith, as we read in the letter to the Hebrews, is the assurance, the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. With faith, we take what we know, we, make, we take what we know, and we make an informed decision, trusting in the promises that we have been given, trusting in God's promises. Look at Abraham, well, in those days, still Abram. Look at Abraham, for example. He and his wife, Sarah, were very old in age, and as the uh, text sort of brashly puts it, they were as good as dead. But he had been given a promise by God that he would become the father of many nations. That his wife Sarah would bear him a son and that his descendants would be as numerous as the stars in the night sky. Now, did, did Abram clearly grasp everything that was going on at the time? Obviously not from uh, the other things that we read about his actions. 
Did Abram know everything that there is to know about the universe? Everything, uh, did he know everything about the future? Did he know everything about God? Well, no. But Abraham did have faith. He believed in the promise that God gave him. And he went forward trusting in that promise. He had some information, but he didn't know for sure how it was all going to work out. But the most, in thing, most important thing was that he made the decision to place his ultimate trust in God. The uh, 14th century poet Dante Allegri, in light of this uh, reading from Hebrews 11, wrote in his uh, third book of his divine comedy, uh, Paradise, he, he wrote this. But now it's time to say what you believe. Profess it openly and tell us also whence your faith has come. And I respond, I believe in one God, soul and eternal, who was never moved, but yet moves all heaven with love and desire. That is faith. If we have faith, it's time, to put, uh, time for us to tell it openly too, and to tell from whence it comes. Putting our faith into action means we take responsibility too, and heed the lesson that the Lord teaches us, namely that we build up a treasure in heaven, not a treasure on earth. Freely and energetically putting all of our time and talents in service of something that will last forever. Also to be ready like the servants of the household are ready when the master of the house returns after a long time away. Jesus in the gospel is telling us that he is the master of that house and he could return at any moment. Our Christian responsibility then is to make good use of uh, the gifts that we've received from God, our lives, our time, our talent, our education, in order to accomplish what the master of the house wanted us to accomplish while he was away. Because he wants to return to his house um, and to see his servants working hard, full of joy and enthusiasm as they strive to keep the house going. Um, but not only just to keep it going, but to make it thrive. But my friends, if it is true wealth that we are after, true wealth belongs to the one who loves virtue instead of money, for whom having just a few things is sufficient. It belongs to the one whose hand is open to the needs of the poor. To the person who delights in putting their time and talent and resources in the service of another's good. This is the person who is gathering up their storehouse, their treasure in heaven. And such a person as this will find that their investment has gained interest. A reward is waiting for them for people who have been leading an upright and blameless life. May it be so for each one of us as well. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.